He is a tireless advocate for peaceful reconciliation and one of the strongest voices for human rights in South Sudan. He has been threatened and harassed, beaten and abused, arrested and detained. In his fight for transnational justice in the world's youngest country, Human Rights Defender and the recipient of the Civil Rights Defender of the Year Award 2017, Edmund Yakani, risks his life literally every day. I have a conviction that as a human being, we are born free and nobody has the right to take away our lives. After decades of civil war, independence brought renewed hope for the people of the new nation, South Sudan, in 2011. But today, six years later, the country is immersed in a new bloody internal conflict that's caused the death of hundreds of thousands and the displacement of millions. It's a really very violent situation, and if I say violent situation, it's described by a lot of human rights atrocities taking place in various parts of the country, economical situation worsening. If I can say in simple words, food becomes luxury, which is a basic right of any human being. South Sudan is one of the poorest countries in the world. Impunity for violence and grave abuses remains widespread. It's a country where respect for fundamental human rights is rarely observed. Edmund Yakani is one of few human rights defenders who's chosen to remain in this very difficult context to actively work to ensure respect for human rights. Edmund Yakani is arguably the most decisive and resilient human rights defender I have ever met in my life. At very, very high risk, he shouts for the weakest in society, particularly women and children, who have been the primary victims of this unnecessary war. South Sudan is one of the most disastrous places a human could live on. Beginning his career as a law student almost two decades ago, Edmund Yakani has dedicated his life to the fight for human rights. He is an internationally respected voice, speaking out for the most vulnerable groups and individuals in society, for those who've been forced to abandon their homes, for victims of torture seeking redress, for journalists who've been arbitrarily detained or imprisoned, or suddenly gone missing, to later be found dead. I personally, I was one time hijacked by armed groups that drive me around the town and later they dump me to a water. But at least I'm lucky enough that I was not killed. As a human rights defender, you can't predict when will you lose your life or when will you fall vulnerable to people who want to take away your life. So we are on day to day just wishing that let God save us. I've lost more than seven friends who have lost their lives that directly are killed because of their actions, their human rights work. So these have not discouraged me. This has built on me strength to work so much to ensure that such issues are brought up to the public attention. Edmund Yakani is the executive director for the Community Empowerment for Progress organization. Convinced that justice will one day prevail, they collect and save evidence of brutal assaults and human rights atrocities in an encrypted database. Over the last three years, the organization has documented more than 700 human rights violations. These pictures are images of uh, massive graves. You can see uh, military people in uniform digging a big hole for burying bodies of civilians. In each grave that, among these pictures here, there are about four. In each grave, we are assuming that, or we estimate the number between 60 to 100 dead bodies of intended, uh, undiscriminative killing of civilians. It's a horrible picture. 
Often, also family and friends of Edmund Yakani have been targets of violence and grave threats to silence his critical voice. In a guarded safe house in neighboring Uganda's capital, Kampala, his family lives in hiding. They were forced into exile after the pressure against them grew too intense in South Sudan. Still, Edmund Yakani is determined he will not leave South Sudan until human rights are restored. I see a very long way to the future that I can describe it as a state, and a state that is a democratic, a state that observes human rights. It's a long way. I still continue my work because I feel it is an obligation as a citizen. It's my citizen's obligation to ensure that I want to volunteer as a role model to make sure that perpetrators of human rights, perpetrators of crimes, never go free.